Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. We're now continuing our conversation and debate over the Eastern uh, Rail Line and the narrow gauge versus the standard gauge. And we're now being joined by the Presidential Senior Special Assistant on Public Affairs, Ajuri Ingilali. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Good morning to you, my dear sister and brother, and thank you for having me. All right. We just had a conversation with a representative of the Nigerian Institution of Civil Engineers, and he explained the concerns of, you know, the engineering body in Nigeria as to, you know, why the government would pick a narrow gauge over the eastern, over the standard gauge. He mentioned a lot of factors, and I wanted to start with uh, the marginalization of the east that he mentioned. According to him, the narrow gauge has been phased out in many parts of the world. He says it's outdated and that there will be issues with interconnectivity, you know, being able to move from the narrow gauge to the standard gauge, there'll be a lot of challenges with that. He also mentioned that if the standard gauge has been, you know, what has been in use in other parts of the country, why the Eastern, why the narrow gauge for the Eastern rail line? And he's asking, would there be any marginalization here? or letting the government know that that could be how it's been perceived. How do you react to that? Thank you very much uh, for all of these uh, legitimate concerns and observations. Uh, I will just start by saying that you can trust Nigerians uh, to uh, attribute uh, some form of political or ethnic dimension to just core infrastructural matters. Uh, let, let me just say very quickly uh, that the way this works, is we're talking about a comparison between the Western Corridor, uh, which is the lagos abeokuta Ibadan line, which is a standard gauge line. Uh, you're talking about under 200 kilometers, thereabout. Uh, you're now, uh, not you, but people are now comparing that uh, to a 1,400 kilometer line uh, that if you want to do standard gauge all the way through will cost the nation 14, one, four, 14 billion US dollars uh, at a time when we have a revenue crunch, at a time when we are still trying to deal with how we are going to uh, bridge a 50 year infrastructural deficit across schools, hospitals, airports, seaports, power plants, dams, farms, uh, roads, bridges, and the like. Uh, $14 billion on one rail line, uh, I think all of us can agree, is a whole lot of money. Uh, so this is a strictly financial matter and what makes the most sense for the country at this moment in time. Now, with that said, uh, you're comparing uh, that is now being compared with the Western Corridor Line, Lagos to uh, to uh, uh, Abeokuta uh, to Ibado. Uh, that is uh, approximately one point nine billion dollars, uh, one point nine billion dollars versus uh, potentially 14 billion dollars. I think I think Nigerians, uh, we are very uh, we are very practical people were very pragmatic. I think that the most Nigerians who understand the finances of what I have just mentioned, the Andrei. links that I have just mentioned, will understand why it is that at this moment in time, we could not embark on a standard gauge rail line uh, for Portaco to Medjugorje at this moment. Uh, that Andrei, is not now Andrei, hold on. Not be in future plans. But at this moment, we needed that development on the ground. And I think I need to add very quickly, my brother, if you don't mind, that we must also acknowledge the fact that we had done a very extensive economic analysis of the rail lines in this country. We found that the Western Corridor we're talking about, uh, from Lagos to Ibadan to, to Khan, carries about 30 million tons of economic goods and services annually, as against the uh, 11 million uh, tons of the Eastern Corridor, the Potako to Medjugorje axis. So what we are saying is that if you have a line that is doing three times uh, the economic value uh, of, of, of the other rail line. It only makes sense to make the, the primary investment in the rail line that is dealing with 75% of the nation's import and export flows. That's just basic economic uh, calculation. So I think anybody attributing the notion of marginalization to this, uh, when we are spending $3 billion on this, on this line, which is even more than the Western Corridor, uh, Lagos... Ajuri, 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 Ajuri this, this has been described as... Uh, new rail stations in all capitals of this country. Kindly hold on. Uh, all of that. Ajuri, I think, I think Ajuri, Ajuri, kindly hold on. This has been described as penny-wise, pound-foolish. Um, um, regardless of, you know, how much, you know, we're discussing that has been spent on it, you know, because, the, like the minister says, uh, Ratim Amechi said, you know, that, you know, it, it sounds like what he's saying is let's make do with this for now, and later we can then invest, you know, and of course get a standard gauge 
uh, line. So do doesn't that, you know, isn't it better to make the, the proper investments now and get a standard gauge line running instead of spending $3 billion and then planning that later in the future will then, you know, change to a standard gauge line? No, 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 not at all. Uh, first of all, we have to understand something. Um, we have been searching for the $14 billion. By the way, uh, let me just say it here for those who do not know, right? Uh, when uh, the Minister of Transportation, Rotim Yanechi, approached President Mohamedou Buhari concerning the Portaco to Medjugorje line, it was President Mohamedou Buhari that said, look, I only want a standard gauge. I want a standard gauge. Let us go and find the financing for that $14 billion standard gauge. That is what I want. It was the minister who prevailed on him and said, sir, the reality is we have searched everywhere for where we will get financing of $14 billion for this line. And at this very moment, it is not forthcoming. So it is better for us to get economic activity on that particular rail corridor uh, on a line that will not ever become moribund. See, I want to explain something very quickly. But do you agree? Um, do you agree? Uh, we, we need to work with time, Ajiri. But do you agree that... Um, we are not spending money correctly here because there's also concerns about maintenance. You know, they've said that these um, narrow gate lines have been phased out in, you know, in other countries in the world. So if we are doing this, does it you know, also not become a problem that is something that would be difficult for us to maintain, it's difficult for us to get trains for, difficult, yeah. difficult for us to keep running because no. we, we don't have you know, any of no, these not, resources not. here? Yes, thank you very much for the question. First of all, uh, that is factually inaccurate. Uh, what that man stated is simply not true. You have, you have countries in, in, in Southeast Asia as well as uh, other parts of Africa that are building narrow gauges right now. Uh, so those rail lines still have viability. That is not true at all. Uh, I want to be very clear about the difference in terms of specifications. The narrow gauge that everybody is trying to make, uh, to be, uh, make it out to be that it's very useless. It runs up to 100 kilometers an hour. For comparison, the Abuja Kaduna standard gauge that we all talk about is about 120 kilometers per hour in terms of operate, operating speed. You're talking about a difference of 20 kilometers per hour. And we're making it sound like it's 200 kilometers per hour difference. So that's number one. Number two, President Mohamed Buhari also put in place uh, a mandate that anybody coming to the country to build rail line must now, they have to build railway university. We have two universities coming up, one in River State, one in uh, uh, Katsina State, which is going to transfer the technology so that we can maintain our own narrow gauge and standard gauge rail lines. But I want to emphasize that these, this standard gauge is still going to be moving heavy cargoes through the eastern corridor of this country into the eastern ports. And so it's never going to be useless. Even when we build the standard gauge, that, uh, that uh, narrow gauge is still going to be very useful in terms of moving these large-scale goods, taking them off our roads, and moving them directly into the ports. Okay, Ajuri, we, we understand your argument here, but just lastly, is there any chance that the government might change its mind? You know, seeing all the opposition to this, people are saying the standard gauge is more durable, it has the capacity to you know, take more, more weight, it's even faster and all of that. Is there any possibility that the government might change its mind, backtrack, and then, you know, invest in the standard gauge for durability and, you know, for sustainability in the long term? Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm a bit surprised that we feel in this country that we cannot walk and chew gum at the same time. Uh, it is possible for us to build a, a, a narrow gauge line that can deal with the heavy cargoes that can deal with the heavy uh, economic, uh, you know, cargoes that will be coming through uh, that axis, even as we now plan forward the, toward the standard gauge. I think for us to say that we must only have standard gauge, that is not how it has been done anywhere in the world. Most of these countries, they had their, they, they went through time, they went through a progression where they had the narrow gauge, then they had the standard gauge. Now many of them have even gone beyond the standard gauge into the very, very high speed bullet trades. So, so it's a progression. For us, no line is going to be useless. I've, I've already stated here that the difference is about 20 kilometers okay, per hour. So basically you're saying the speed. government I, is going okay. ahead with the narrow gauge, despite the opposition to it. 
Absolutely, we are. Absolutely, okay. we are. Absolutely right. going ahead. And right. I think the opposition is not much, just in the quarters of those who did, who had the chance to build these rail lines and absolutely failed. Even narrow gauge, they couldn't do it. Oh, well, um, you know, also to clarify, you know, it, it, it might be stated as maximum speed 100 kilometers per hour, but it doesn't always hit 100 kilometers per hour. You know, it's, it's, it always is around 65 to 70 uh, kilometers per hour. But uh, just to put that out there, uh, Ajiri, thank you very much for your time this morning. We see thank that you're you. on the road. Um, and of course, we would like to have another conversation um, about this when we have more time. Uh, good morning once again. Bye bye. Thank you very much. God bless all of you. Take care. All right. Um, that's, you know, the most that we can share with you this morning. It's been a pretty tense morning uh, mm -hmm. from, of course, uh, reverends to uh, engineers and uh, economists. also early economists, you know, a lot earlier. But thanks for, for staying with us. If you missed out on any of it, remember to join us on our social media platforms. It's simply at PLOS TV Africa, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Same thing with our YouTube channel. Yes, thank you very much for staying tuned. I am Annetta Felix. The news comes up next. I am Osao Gye Ogbonwa. Bye-bye.